ideology written, or is it wrong? That's the way it was given to me. <laughs> yes. And I want to ask you to look at some texts with me tonight, and just to ask you to read some scriptures with me, and you decide whether or not you can see pattern in the Word of God. All right. All right. And in the text before us, the first scripture is 2 Timothy 1.13. And in the King James Version of the Bible, it says, Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in the Christ of me. In another translation, in the NIV, it says, What you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. The King James Version doesn't use the word pattern, but the NIV does use the word pattern then. And also, another text that goes along with that is 1 Timothy 1.16. In that text, the NIV uses the word example, but in James Version uses the word pattern, where Paul says the Lord has set him forth as a pattern to those who obey the need. That's right. Talk about what he was doing. Yes. The last thing on the nature is first and all that. He said, the Lord had mercy on me, he showed mercy to him, and has set him forth uh -huh. as a pattern. That's All right, that's right. The Greek word of that text is kupo uh, topo sis. Kupo topo sis. And it's actually to go sin in that text, or text. 1 Timothy 1.13, 2 Timothy 1.13, and 1 Timothy 1.16. But what does it mean? Yes. Kupo to Kosis. That's the noun form. Uh -huh. What it means is sketch, a delineation, a form, a formula, a present, a presentment, or a sample. Uh -huh. In 1st Timothy 1.16, the NIV translates it example, but the King James Version translated a pattern. Yes. And I want to show you tonight, this lesson is plain and simple, and you can follow me. God has given us many things in His Word, and there are certain things that recur. You'll see it over and over. Uh -huh. And I believe you may refer to that as a pattern. Amen. There are some things that the Lord teaches us in that may not be a pattern. It might just be said one time. But you can see things when it recurs over and over. That's right. That's right. I want you to understand this. The gospel was first scripture. The gospel of Christ was first spoken. That's right. That's right. Before it was written. Amen. Amen. Scripture. 
Amen. When it's written down, it's scripture. Right? Amen. Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2 and verse 2. Aha. Uh -huh. What does he say then? The things you, what does it say? The things you heard me say. Uh -huh. In the presence of many witnesses. That's right. And trust to rely on them. Uh -huh. Who will also be qualified to teach us. That's the right. You heard me say. Amen. So, there is scripture, it's spoken. Right. And later, some of it is written down. That's right. And the church in Thessalonica is urged by Paul to hold on to the things that he had taught them. He did that. He was right. a long time in Thessalonica. That's the right. Back says it was only there three Sabbath days before they ran him off. Right. But he said, whether by word of mouth or by letter. That's right. That's right. So, the things were spoken and then they were written down. Now Peter is going to tell his hearers some of these same things. I want you to note with me in 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1 from about verse 12. But Peter is going to tell them, you know these things. You know these things. It says, so I will always remind you. This is from 2 Peter 1, 12 to 15. So I will always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. Right. I think it is right to refresh your memory That's right. as long as I live in the tent of this body. That's right. Because I know that I will soon put it aside as our Lord Jesus Christ has made it clear to me. Uh -huh. And I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will always be able to remember me. Amen. Amen. After I'm gone, you will still have it. Why? He will write it down. That's right. Amen. You see the letter he's writing to them. That's right. But they knew those things. He says, I'm writing to you to remind you of That's right. Things. That's right. So that after I'm gone, you will always be able to remember these things. That's right. And you know, Peter says, what Paul wrote was scripture. That's right. <laughs> We're talking about the scriptures. Amen. And he says to us, what Paul wrote the scripture. I want you to look at that text. You know these things, but I'm reminding you too. I want you to read it from the word so you you be reminded. Second so, uh -huh. Peter chapter three, from about verse sixteen. And they're talking about he's talking about the coming of the Lord. Uh -huh. And he's 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 in agreement with Peter in what Peter is saying. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But he talks about Paul, and he says, Peter is talking about Paul in chapter 3, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 16. He says, he writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. Uh -huh. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, uh -huh. which ignorant and unstable people distort, as they do the other scriptures, scriptures. Uh -huh. to their own destruction. Mm -hmm. And he says what Paul is writing, is scripture. Yeah. And people are distorting that. And that's what we're dealing with today. That's right. The distortion of scripture. Yeah. We have scripture, but people are not understanding it right. As brother was urging us, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh -huh. right. People are distorting it, twisting it to suit their own teachings. Yeah. Some even write that they own, make their own translations to support oh, oh, their teaching. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But he says what, what Paul wrote was scripture. But I want you to know that the apostles were in agreement. They were in agreement. The prophets were in agreement. They had New Testament prophets who spoke the word of God. First Corinthians 14, you can see that. They prophesied during the assembly. Well, we're not saying that we should do that today because we have a prophecy as That's right. But at that end time, the prophets spoke. Uh -huh. They needed that. They needed that. Because what the prophets spoke were revelations from the Lord. If yes, one sir. is speaking and a revelation comes to another and is sitting down, let the first one sit down and the other one speak. Yeah. What did they speak? Right. They spoke the word of God to the church. They were not just for telling future, they were telling the scripture to the people, what God wanted the people to do and how they should live, and the encouragement that they gave. That's why in 1 Corinthians 14 it says, Prophecy edifies. Speaking in tongues doesn't because you're not interpreting. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So the prophet spoke, and what the prophet said was the word of God. Right. And that's why it says we know in part. 
And we prophesy in part. But when that which is part of the God, we prophesy in part. Amen. Amen. Right. Scripture. Scripture spoke. But the, the apostles and the prophets, they were all in harmony. Uh -huh. And you can see that. I'm going to show you this. What does, what does Peter say right here in chapter 3? And you may look at verse 10. He's talking about the coming of the Lord, right? And he says this in chapter 3, verse 10. He says, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. Have you heard that before? Oh, yeah. Well, has Paul said that? Paul said the same thing. 1 yeah. Thessalonians 5, 1 and 2. So, you know, God is concerned in the coming of the Lord. We don't need to write to you. For the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. First Thessalonians 5, 2. So right. here's Peter saying, the Lord's coming is like a thief in the night. Uh -huh. And here's, here's Paul. Peter says it here. Paul has already said it in another text. The day of the Lord is coming like a thief in the night. Right. They're all in agreement right. with one another. They're saying the same thing. Amen. And the gospel that Peter preached is the same <laughs> gospel that Paul preached. Amen. When, when Peter preached on the day of Pentecost and you read the, the gospel message, the gospel message is not going to change. It's going to be the same always. Right. It's going to be the same if Peter preached it or if Paul preached it. It's going to be the same. Amen. When, when, Paul, when Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, there's the gospel. Acts chapter 2, verse 22, and Paul, he said, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God and only by miracles and wonders and signs, God did by him in the presence of you as yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determined counsel of the Lord of God, and came down by wicked hands and crucified him. Who God is rich and loose the pains of death because it was not possible for him to keep the sword on him. What does he preach? Jesus is the Messiah, Jesus is the Christ. Amen. And you took him, you crucified him. You marry him, God raised him up. Amen. That's what Peter preached. Amen. What gospel does Paul preach? Here it is. First Corinthians chapter 15. That's it. The apostles and the prophets, mm -hmm. they're all in agreement and they say the same thing. And you're going to read it over and over again. Uh -huh. That this is the gospel and it doesn't yeah. change. Yeah. I see you in first Corinthians chapter 15. And here Paul is talking to the church of Corinth and he's talking about the gospel. And we say, what Peter preached is the same thing Paul preached. Uh -huh. So here it is, he says, now brothers, I want you to, to remind you of the gospel I preached you, uh -huh. which you received and on which you have taken your stand. Yeah. That is gospel you will say if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you believe in vain. That's right. Now what did he preach? Verse 5 says, verse 3 says, for what I received, I pass on to you. That's right. As of first importance, that Christ died for our sins, mm -hmm. according to the scriptures, uh -huh. that he was buried, mm -hmm. that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. Uh -huh. Aha. Then, uh, Amen. Amen. You read in Acts? Yes. You read in 1 Corinthians? You read from Peter? You read it from Paul? That's right. It's the same gospel. The same gospel. It's not going to change. And the response to the gospel is the very same. Amen. When they understood and believed the gospel in the day of Pentecost, they said, What shall we do? What shall we do? Uh -huh. And you already know the answer. What shall we do? Acts 2 37. What shall we do? And Peter says to them, Repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what he says. Amen. Amen. That's it. All That's right. it. So Paul is preaching the same gospel that Peter preached. Uh -huh. Aha. So what is the response to his gospel? Same. It's the same. The same. response is the same. Right. So when he tells about himself and his own conversion, you can read it in three places. Acts 9, Acts 22, Acts 26. Uh -huh. And in Acts 22, he's telling about his conversion. Right. When it comes to Ananias coming to him after he had met the Lord, look at the pattern. In Acts chapter 2, the gospel is preached. Uh -huh. Acts chapter 2, verse 37 says, When they heard this, they were cut to the heart. Uh -huh, that's it. And they said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? What does cut to the heart mean? Or they were pricked in the heart. What does that mean? Uh -huh. The message touched them. Yeah. They believed it. Uh -huh. And believers asked, What shall we do? Uh -huh, that's right. Believers were told to repent and be baptized. Amen. And here is Paul's account. He preaches the same gospel. Yeah. And when he had come to the Lord, he was an unbeliever. He was one of those who was appointed the law. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's 
right. disciples were gone. Yeah, they were right. blaspheming. They were referring to Jesus as Lord. Uh -huh. They were saying that he's equal with God. Uh -huh. He was upholding the law. Right. But on that road to the masters that day about noon in the And yeah, that's it. That's it. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. So I saw why the machine had done. Jesus of the master. He was experiencing the resurrection. Amen. He didn't believe that Jesus was raised from the dead, but he has experienced the resurrection because he meets the Lord. Uh -huh. The Lord speaks to him. The Lord confronts him. Uh -huh. yeah. He becomes a believer. Uh -huh. He cannot doubt the evidence. It's too strong. Yeah. And he goes to the city. And what does he do? Does he go seeking out the Christians? He was led by the hand, by the way. He was blinded by the light. But when he comes to the city, he's not trying to find a Christian. The Bible says he's praying and he's fasting. Fasting. That's right. Three days and night, he ate nothing and drank nothing. He right. fasted. Fasting. What's the attitude of this man? I think you see the penitent believer. Amen. He believed. Sure. And now he's no longer going after the Christians, but he's trying to get his self right to Christ. That's right. right. Amen. So he's a believer. Amen. And he's showing repentance. Just like Peter said to them when he asked, What shall we do? Uh -huh. Repent. That's right. Here's this man. With a changed heart. That's what the balance is returning to Christ, turning to God. And then later on, the Ananias comes and says, What are you waiting for? And he tells the story about his own conversion. That's right. That's right. And then Ananias says to me, What are you waiting for? Rise and be baptized. Be baptized. What should we hear? Fear. Aha. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's what happened in Acts 2. Repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. That's right. So here is this man preaching the same gospel and telling about his conversion. And his conversion is the same as those people under their background. Amen. That's it. That's it. Not only that, in Acts chapter 8, the man from Ethiopia. He hears the gospel of Christ, he believes. And he wants to be baptized. Uh -huh. be baptized. Right. Right. And same Acts chapter 8, the people of Samaria, they were mm -hmm. preaching, they believed, and when they believed first, and they saw the things that they did, they were baptized. That's right, that's right. And then Cornelius and his family heard the gospel. Right. And Paul came up here to him to be That's it, that's it. it. Lydia by the riverside. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. And the general. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. They received by the They saw the same. So I think that there is much to say about the fact that the Lord has given us things. I want to show you something. Not only in that matter of conversion, but in other things that the church was commanded to do. That's right, that's right. When the Lord instituted the Lord's Supper, uh -huh. Acts 26, we really come in Acts 26. Mm -hmm. And he said, the, the, the writer of Matthew gives us how the Lord did it. He took bread, yes. gave thanks, yeah. broke it, yeah. gave it to his disciples. That's this it. is my body, which is given for you. He took the cup, uh -huh. he gave thanks. That's it. This is my blood. That's right. The New Testament uh -huh. was shed for you. That's it. That's it. All right. So he raised out his pattern and he said, This do in remembrance of me. That's it. Uh -huh. This is a command from the Lord. That's right. All learned about that. When you became a Christian, he was led that room. That night when the Lord did that, he yeah, was yeah, not less yeah, that's right, that's right. But he learned that pattern. Amen. Or he learned that, that example. Amen. And he taught it in part. Amen. We know he taught it in part. But after a while, the Corinthians drifted from that. Yes. First Corinthians 11. He says, I'm not commanding you for this because when you come together and you're leading, you're more hard. Uh -huh. They do more hard than good. That's right, that's right. And then he's bringing them back. He says, some of you, are, you, you what you're doing is not the Lord's Supper. Uh -huh. Somebody's eating over here, and you, somebody gets drunk, and uh -huh. somebody's hungry, but you're not right. the Lord's Supper. Right. Let me remind you of what I taught you. Right. Mm -hmm. Acts 11, uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 23. For I received from the Lord oh, amen. what I passed on oh, to you. Yeah. Uh -huh. And what does it say? Exactly what we read in Matthew 26. Same thing, that's right. For the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed to pray and he given time to go. Mm. So he's bringing them back to what he had already taught them. That's right. Which he said he received from the Lord. That's right. That's so right. the Lord intended for this to be done. And it was done. Uh -huh. 
Uh -huh. It was done right. Amen. And then people drifted away from that and they brought back to that. Amen. Amen. That is what the Lord wants. Amen. All that taught them, they drifted away. And he brought them back. Amen. There are other things in the Bible that you can see. Think about this. Paul writes to two different men. One is in Ephesus. And if you look at your map, Ephesus would be in the country that we know today as Turkey. Asia Minor. We yeah. refer to that as yeah. Asia Minor. Right. Asia is over there. And he writes to another man who is on the island of Crete. Mm. And Crete is way over there in the Mediterranean Sea. Yeah. But he's giving both of them instructions concerning the, 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 the making of elders in the, in the given congregation. Uh, congregation in that's right. And congregations on the island of Crete. Crete, that's right. But the instruction is the same. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Read 1 uh, Timothy chapter 3, and he's talking about elders. And who can be an elder? And you read 1 Timothy 3. And there it is. Right. Then you read Titus chapter 1. Uh -huh. Timothy is over in Ephesus. Mm -hmm. Titus is on the island of Crete. Uh -huh. okay. And he's writing two different letters to diff two different men in two different locations under the miles of fire. <coughs> but the instruction is the same. Amen. Who can be same. in heaven right. in the Lord's church? The one who teaches us sometimes in heaven, sometimes. Just one instruction to a given church. But the Bible teaches us this way. It teaches us an explicit command. Amen. 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 And it teaches us in what we refer to as divine example. Uh -huh. And the Bible teaches us by implication what may be implied. That's right. That's by right. direct command. Uh -huh. And what may be implied is allowable just as the direct command. That's right. Let me give an example of that. We are commanded by the Lord not to forsake the assembly of ourselves together. Amen. That's a command. That's a command. What is implied in that? If you assemble, where, where, where you need a place to assemble, such as we have here. Amen. So we are commanded to assemble. The uh -huh. Lord does command that. That's right. But you can derive some things from that command. <coughs> That's implied. That's right. You have to have a place to assemble. That's right. right. In the Bible, you can read of people meeting in a church. I mean, meeting the, the church meeting in a house. Right. The church meets in somebody's house. You read that in Philemon. You read that in Romans chapter 16. Aquila uh, and Priscilla in Rome. And so the church met in a house. But what happened in Jerusalem when the church first began? 3,000 people, you have a house that big? No. <laughs> <laughs> they met in the temple courts. That's right, that's right. They met in the temple courts. Yeah. We also read that they went from house to house breaking bread. <laughs> so it's okay to meet in a house if the number of people can fit in the house. But what do you do when it gets so big that you can't meet in somebody's house? Yeah. Now there are people who, who insist on a church house. Yeah. And there are people there's that movement. Church house, you know, we just meet in our home. And they think, well, you don't, you don't need to do anything else. But how are you going to fulfill the mission of the Lord? Yeah. How are you going to do the great, what we call the great commission? Yes. You can go out and talk to people one to one. Yeah. And all of that, that's fine. But there comes a time when the congregation is too big to be in the house. Mm -hmm. And the Lord did not limit us to the house. Yeah. Because the Jerusalem congregation started off with the apostles and those other people who were there that other room. And then it said, 3,000 obeyed the gospel of the Lord. I don't know that day. Amen. About 3,000. That's right, that's right. So I don't know anybody that has a house that's big enough to hold 3,000 people. No. Not even the emperor's throne. I don't think his mansion or whatever he lived in could have held that number of people. Uh -huh. So there's certain things in fine. And we, we, can, we can meet on the tree, yes. Yeah. What happens when it rains or when it's too cold? 
Yeah. You need a place to meet. So Amen. It's implied. It's implied. Bible teaches us a direct command. The Lord says to us, not forsaking the assembly of yourself. That's a direct command. Going to all the world and preach the gospel to every region. That's a direct command. Right. We have examples of how people are saved. Right. Acts chapter 2 and all of the book of Acts. We have examples of how people are saved. Right. We can look at those examples and know how we ought to be saved. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And then the Bible teaches us by implication what you can derive from the direct command. Uh -huh. But there are patterns for some things. And I think I'll show you some tonight. Yeah. So if we talk about uh, pattern theology, and theology only means the study of God. That's what yeah. it means. Yeah. And if you're talking about if there are patterns in the Bible, I would say that yeah. in, many, in many ways. Yeah. As far as the whole body of doctrine, there's a whole lot of that. Huh. And many other things to be considered. Yeah. It's a Christian life. And you can find portions in different texts of scripture, different letters of how to live a Christian life. You put it all together, that's the body of doctrine that we have to live by. Yeah. The New Testament. Right. As well as the Trust. There are things from the Old Testament that have been incorporated under the New Testament. In fact, all of the Ten Commandments can be found again in the New Covenant except the Sabbath. Yeah. 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 So we have a body of doctrine. We have a body of teaching mm -hmm. that's right. incorporated in New Testament, and so we came over from the Old Testament. Yeah. We live by the whole Bible. The problem is understanding what applies to us. Hey, hey, That's why the Bible is rightly divided into 